material. You pour it out in the hand, and that's radioactive contamination. Is it radioactive? Yeah, it is. Very radioactive. Now, decontamination is nothing but scooping it back up and putting it into the bottle. I just now decontaminated my hand. No, I didn't do such a good job. Not good at all. Is it still radioactive? Yeah, that's called residual radioactivity. Now, under the decontamination rules of the government, when you decontaminate somebody like this that's that contaminated, and this is certainly a reportable incident under current DOE regulations, when you decontaminate it, it has to go down a control drain so that you don't disperse radioactivity. Do I qualify as a controlled drain? That material that I just ate is uh, not soluble in body fluids. Like it's been this. It's uh, it was fired it was originally at 940 degrees C, oxide. where it becomes U308, known in the industry as HCl insoluble. In other words, it will not dissolve in concentrated hydrochloric acid, hot. Your stomach has 10th normal hydrochloric acid in it, so it won't even dissolve. The stuff is so fine that it has no texture to it. It doesn't even feel rough. So it's tasteless, odorless, has no texture. How is it supposed to hurt me? Because I've been eating this on lecture tour for two years, the state of Washington felt it necessary to confiscate my uranium samples so that I would be safe. Dr. Fulton from the Hanford Environmental Health Foundation called up and he says, hey, I heard one of your guys OD'd on uranium today, Galen. And we talked for a little while and he says, oh, that was you. And I says, listen, I can eat all that stuff I want. He says, it'll ruin your kidneys. How are your kidneys? They're fine. Well, you should have been chelated within four hours. And I mean, you guys are going to follow me around the country and give me chelating agents every four hours after I eat it on lecture tour? <coughs> He says, we'll give you any medical assistance that you need, Galen. We don't want anything to happen to you. <laughs> I said, did that include turning out the federal SWAT team four days ago to get me? Where are these guys coming from? Well, here's a piece of metal. Density of 19, 19.0. If you know your chemistry and physics, you know that there are only two metals that have that density plutonium, and uranium. Radioactive pyrophoric density of 19. Outside of a laboratory, most of you can't tell me whether this is uranium, plutonium, or a mixture of the two. Now, I said that it's heavy, and it is. Let's see if it's radioactive. Yeah, it is. Pyrophoric, what does that mean? Pyro, fire. Black on the end. The spark that just came off there is pyro, fire, burn. If it's plutonium, I just contaminated this area of Arizona in excess of the EPA's limit for one square mile of surface. <laughs> Somebody laughed. It's serious. The end of progress altogether says that I just contaminated you in excess of the limit for one square mile. It's now silver on the end. Tomorrow it'll be black because it self-oxidizes, this, this black color like this, all by itself. Plutonium does that and uranium does that. Is it hazardous? Yeah, it is, because they take depleted uranium metal and make it into 50 caliber bullets, fire them from shoulder-held weapons. In 1976, they obsoleted tank warfare with these things because it only takes one dog face with one weapon to knock out a 65-ton tank. 
It'll go through three inches of armor plate, and when it comes out the other side, it's that white hot spark that we just made. And the five men in that tank are dead because it'll burn all of the oxygen out of the air and burn their flesh. 1976, the obsoleted tank warfare, and you never even knew that. They make 10,000 of those bullets every day in the United States. We got enough in Arsenal to sink all of Russia's tanks, and our boys in the Defense Department don't even talk about it. Yeah, it's hazardous to your health. Reminds me, uh, lead is hazardous to your health too. 